finish up this section and talk uh, arc length and uh, surface is of revolution. Actually, we are not going to do surface of revolution because of the time we have left in this year. So we're going to just focus today on arc length. I will not put surfaces of revolution um, on a test. So um, we're going to focus on arc length today. And arc length, we're going to let the function y be f of x, a smooth curve on the interval. So it's going to look something like that. Um, from a to b, the arc length of the curve between a and b is s is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of x squared dx. And then for the same function with y, same thing. Your bounds will be, your c and d would be two y values. Of course, you'd have a dy and be a function in terms or a derivative in terms of y. So let's give this a shot. we well, got to find the arc length of that function. 4 square root of 2x cubed all over 3 minus 1 uh, between 0 and 1. So let's get started. Um, well, I know that I'm going to have to find the derivative of this. So we know the surface area, going back to the definition of this, um, is going to be 1 plus the derivative of f of x. So really right now, I know what the function is. We need to take a moment and find the derivative of this. So I usually write what y, y is 4 square root of 2 x to the third all over 3 minus 1. But this here we can um, simplify a little bit so we can take the derivative a little bit easier. So it's going to be 4. Uh, this will be 2x cubed to the 1 half power. And this 4 thirds I'm just going to put right out front minus 1. So when we take the derivative, um, take the 1 half, multiply that by the 4 thirds. So we're figuring out what y prime is. And that's going to be 2, well, it'll be 4 over 6, which will be 2 thirds times what's inside. Subtract 1 from the 1 half, so negative 1 half. Um, but don't forget the chain of that. So 6x squared. Don't forget to be chaining these. Uh, the minus 1 is going to go away when we take the derivative. And so to do a few simplification techniques, um, the 2x cubed to the 1 half power, we can move that downstairs. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4. We'll have the x squared up top. And then on the bottom is going to be square root of 2x cubed. Okay, so that's the derivative. So to find the arc length, the arc length is going to be, so I'm going to put L for length is equal to, because it's talking about between 0 and 1, we're going to bound this between 0 and 1, of the square root of 1 plus the derivative that we just found, the derivative of y. So it's going to be 4x squared all over the square root of 2x cubed, and that is going to be squared. And then don't forget our dx. Okay, uh, we now need to integrate this, but before we do that, let's simplify this a little bit further. 0 to 1, um, we're going to go 1 plus uh, 4x squared. That squared is going to be 16x to the fourth over square, the square root is just going to be 2x cubed dx. And we can further divide that out to make it a little bit easier. So length is equal to from 0 to 1 of 1. Uh, 16 divided by 2, we're going to have 8. And then x. X to the fourth over x to the third. And this is still, oop, I forgot my square root. Don't forget your square root here as well. And that's going to be dx. Okay, so now we're going to integrate this. When we integrate this, um, looking kind of like a u substitution uh, situation, we've got multiple things within that square root. So we'll let our u be 1 plus 8x. And our du, derivative of that is just going to be 8dx. So therefore, dx would be du over 8. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this so we can integrate it. Um, 
we're going to go have the integral. Now that 1 8th, I'm going to pull out front because it is a constant. Um, this is going to be u, and it'll be the square root of u, but I'm going to call this u to the 1 half so we can integrate it more easier. And I'm also at this point going to redefine my bounds. Instead of going from 0, remember 0 to 1 is in terms of x. I now have this in terms of u, so I don't have to resub this in. I'm going to just um, change this. So uh, plug in 0 into here, and we have 1 plus 8 times 0, so that's going to be 1. And then uh, plug in 1 here. 8 times 1 is 1, so that'll be 9. So we get the bounce from 1 to 9. And don't forget, we have our du. We now have something we can integrate. And that'll give us our arc length. So the integration of this, we have 1 8. Uh, that's going to be u to the 3 halves power. And then divide by 3 halves, which would be multiplying by the reciprocal. And it's from 1 to 9. Um, keep the 1 out of 18th out front. Just basically plug that into your calculator. So if you plug in 9 into that 2 thirds um, times 9 to the 3 halves power, that's going to be 18. Uh, 1 to 3 halves power is 1 times 2 thirds is minus 2 thirds. And uh, we do get 13 over 6 for our solution. And you could have also multiplied the 2 thirds and the 1 8 together at first and pulled that out front if you'd rather do that. Okay. Uh, we have one more example we're going to try. And this is an example in terms of y. Similar idea. Um, and it's bound between negative 1 half and positive 1 half. So I know that my x is going to be 1 minus uh, y squared. And we'll just call it the 1 half power. Uh, the derivative of this, pull the 1 half out front, 1 minus y squared, subtract 1, negative 1 half, and again, always be chaining, and we're going to have negative 2y. And to simplify this out a little bit, uh, the twos would cancel. Uh, so it's looking like we've got a negative y up top. And we can move that 1 minus y squared at the bottom. That'll be a square root. OK, so let's remember how to find arc length. Again, this is a y, but same, same idea. 1 plus the derivative squared. And all of that is square rooted. So our arc length, L, we know it's bound from negative 1 half to 1 half of the square root of 1 plus the derivative that we just found squared. So it's going to be negative y over the square root of 1 minus y squared. And that is squared. And this is with respect to y. All right, um, let's clean this up. When we square this, we're still integrated from negative 1 half to 1 half. Um, we've got 1 plus, all right, negative y squared is going to be y squared. And we got a square root. That being squared is just going to get rid of the square root. So it's going to be 1 minus y squared. OK, I've got a little bit of a mess right now with this integration. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, and I should have my dy as well, I'm going to get a common denominator. My common denominator is going to be 1 minus y squared. It's the only denominator we've got. So if I do that, um, things are going to work out kind of nice with this problem because I've got negative 1 half to 1 half. And the 1 is really just 1 minus y squared all over 1 minus y squared. And then we're going to add y squared all over 1 minus y squared. So this is, this part's that 1 right here, dy. And what's going to happen now is that this negative y squared and y plus y squared is going to cancel. So on the top, we've got, again, from negative 1 half to 1 half, on the top is just going to be 1. And on the bottom is 
1 minus y squared. And then we have our dy. Um, now, we can square root the top. That we can do. And the square root of 1 is 1. So it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy. Okay. Um, now, here's, though, where we need to start thinking about a few things. And thinking a while back, uh, I'm looking at that function, and I'm thinking, well, maybe we've got a u substitution. So that's the first thing that I'm thinking about. And we could call that um, u to the negative 1 half power, move that up front. But if we have u is equal to 1 minus y squared, and our du is negative 2y dy, I'm going to stop right there because, yeah, the negative 2 is not a problem, but that y there is going to be a big problem. I'm not going to be able to cancel that out. So now i got to think, all right, well, what other integration techniques had we had? So I'm going to look, in the, if you look in the front of your book, we had all those integration rules, and there was one that we did, and it's been a while, but I will remind you that we did have this one. There's one in the front of your book that looks like this. A squared minus U squared. And this was, unfortunately, inverse trig, everybody's favorite. Arc sine of U over A plus C. And that is definitely an arc sine problem. It's not a hard arc sine problem to do, but we do have to remember that, yeah, we are doing integration. That is a possibility at times. So I'm looking at this problem, and my A I know is 1, and my U value is just Y. So when we integrate this, that's just going to be uh, y over 1. So it's going to be the arc sine, the antiderivative of 1 over square root of 1 minus y squared is just going to be arc sine of y from negative 1 half to 1 half. All right, remember how we did this. Uh, also keep in mind, if we are dealing with arc sine, we have to deal with our principal values. So I'm thinking about unit circles, and we've got to find out, okay, well, with arc sine, our principal values is just this right side from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. These are what the arc sine values are going to be. We're not even going to be looking at those values. Okay, and also keep in mind that if it's an arc cosine, it's from zero to pi. Okay, we're looking at the upper um, ones for that. So where is one half? And I see one half. When is arc sine one half? And that's right here at pi over six. And at negative one half, when I can use eleven pi over six, it's we're going to use negative pi over six because it's from negative pi over two to pi over two. So. Arc sine at 1 half, we said was pi over 6. We're going to minus arc sine of negative 1 half, which was negative pi over 6, which would be 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. Okay, And that is all that we had. If you did move on and you went to um, area of a surface of revolution, we're not going to be doing that. So don't worry about that. You can stop your notes right there. And uh, everybody have a great day. Take care.